let's talk about observability. Observability is a complete must for applications running in a distributed environment like the cloud. And I think we're in a bit of a golden age for observability. We've got a lot of standards converging and they're really widely supported. So things like open telemetry, open tracing are seeing a lot of support in the industry. And what that means is that there's really good integrations between various observability providers. As you would expect, Quarkus has extensions for all of the popular observability frameworks. So just to rewind a bit, hopefully you've heard of Quarkus, but what's a Quarkus extension? An extension takes a library and applies the Quarkus magic to it. So more work is done at build time rather than when you're waiting for your application to start up. And it ensures that everything stays sort of good and consistent with that fast Quarkus startup time and that tiny Quarkus footprint. And then, of course, we don't want to forget the developer joy part. So a good extension can take advantage of its knowledge of the code and the fact that it's now running in a closed world if it's running in Quarkus to make everything delightful and easy and get rid of boilerplate and get rid of these sort of usability frictions that in a dynamic environment are maybe necessary. But what if your observability framework isn't one of the popular ones. This is where writing your own extension can help. They make that library that you want to use, that niche library that you want to use, supersonic and subatomic. And extensions can also do the heavy lifting in your own code base without needing code changes. So they can do things like add Jakarta interceptors, inject log handlers, um, and just all sorts of other bytecode level instrumentation, but without the hassle of writing bytecode because no one wants to write bytecode. Or they also, because it's all sort of front loaded, it avoids the runtime impact of doing a bunch of dynamic code introspection that you otherwise you might observe and avoid just because the performance impact might not be so good. But in Quarkus, you can knock yourself out. So I'm going to show an extension which surfaces observability information to a client which is unusual. Um, I think when you see the client, you won't find it too surprising that Quarkus doesn't support it out of the box. So this is the code for my extension. Um, this is the sort of the, the main processor. And what, what most extensions do is they string together things called build items in a series of build steps. And so the build items are almost always things that already exist unless you're doing something very unusual. And so what your build steps do is create the build items and then they the framework chains them together in the right order. And so what what this is is mostly a, a process of configuration. Um, so what I've got here, I've got a few build steps. So I've got one that's just doing the hello world, of course. Um, I've got another one that's hooking in a log handler. So you can see I'm using a log handler build item. Um, what this build step is doing is adding some things from outside the world, the closed world that Quarkus knows about, into the Quarkus closed world. Um, so that's just a bit of mechanics to make it all work well. What I'm doing here is I'm transforming annotations. So every time I see a JAXRS get annotation, I also add one of my own custom annotations. So this is, you can see this is really powerful. I can do these really quite big changes to my code base without the overhead of runtime introspection. And then the last thing that I've got um, is just an exception mapper. So again, this is kind of a, a standard Jakarta construct, but normally I'd have to add it in by hand. And instead I can use my extension to just blat it in everywhere. So I've got an application which has had my extension added to it. This is just a very simple application, just a to-do app application. So I can do Quarkus dev or I can use the Maven plugin and I can do Maven Quarkus dev. 
and then Quarkus will start up in dev mode, so it will run all the tests and it will um, start giving me some of the output from my extension. So you can see all of the logging is coming out um, twice and once I've got this little Minecrafter um, eye catcher on it. That's not too exciting on its own. If I go to the application and if I refresh the application, you can see, again, I've got that Jakarta interceptor has been added by my extension, and so I can see what's happening. But all of this at the moment, you know, it's kind of cool, but it's basically hello world. Um, I don't really need to write an extension to get stuff to come out to the console. But the other thing that my extension does, besides putting things out to the console, is it sends them to my observability client. And in this case, my observability client is Minecraft. So I'm going to quit my little Quarkus application, which I don't need to do. I'm just doing it so that we can see everything. Um, and I'm going to start up Minecraft. I'm going to join my server and I have to hope that I haven't died. Whoops. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is, I don't recommend Minecraft for production because you do get a little bit more chaos than you possibly want in a, in a normal <laughs> observability client. Um, so this, by the way, is nothing to do with my extension. <laughs> this is just the fact that it's night in Minecraft. So if I now go to the terminal and I start my application, you can see the Quarkus framework is coming up, running the tests. And hey, I've got my Quarkus logging coming out there as well. So now if I go and I visit my application that I'm trying to do observability of, and I hit it, you can see, oh, we got a lightning bolt and there was supposed to be a chicken that spawned, but I think the lightning bolt <laughs> hit the chicken. Um, so let's try that again. Oh no, the lightning bolt hit the chicken again. Yeah, we seem to be getting a lot of chicken meat and not very many chickens. Let's see. Oh yeah, hooray, a chicken survived. So if I hit it again, I can get another, another few chickens. I did, um, I did an upgrade of the, um, Minecraft from 118 to 119 and I found that the um the lightning bolt seemed to be a bit more dangerous to the chicken in the more most recent version. Um, but of course if I want to be really dangerous to the chicken what we can see is what happens if I get an error. So I've hooked an exception mapper in so if I go to like api slash four that's something that should exist in the list and so I get well <laughs> I get a dead chicken because of my lightning bolts but um, there was supposed to be an alive chicken there. But if I go to API slash six, that's something that doesn't exist. And so I get a different message. Something bad happened out in the real world and oh, we got an explosion. And if I do that again, we get another error message. Oh, and I'm getting I'm getting hurt by the explosions, which is kind of what you want, right? You know, if something bad is happening, then, you know, that should cause problems. So the, um, the code for all of this is here at this QR code. Um, and it should be, if you have Minecraft, um, kind of a, <laughs> an unusual way of, of playing with extensions.